What's up, short attention span history nerds? My name is Mike Perry, and you're watching 10 Minute History. The world is filled with coincidences, some mildly interesting, like one's mother and wife showing up to a wedding wearing the same outfit. True story. I'm not going to go any further into that, but it's a true story. But then there are some very fascinating and strange coincidences, like the ones on this list. So let's get started. On August 6th and 9th, 1945, during World War II, the United States dropped two nuclear bombs over Japan's cities of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. The two bombs killed nearly 90,000 people, but in 2019, the Japanese government confirmed that there was at least one man who was in each city on the day that the bombs were dropped and lived to tell the tale. On August 6th, Tsutomu Yamaguchi was in Hiroshima on business. As I was walking along, I heard the sounds of a plane. Just one, he told a British newspaper. I looked up into the sky and I saw a B-29 and it dropped two parachutes. I was looking up into the sky and then all of a sudden it was like a flash of magnesium, a great flash in the sky and I was blown over. When he realized that he had not been killed, he went home. On August 9th, he returned home to Nagasaki, only to experience another nuclear blast for a second time. I wish I could tell you that he had morphed into some type of Japanese Hulk, cause that would have made an awesome story, but he didn't. Yamaguchi lived a quiet life and died at the age of 93 in 2010 from stomach cancer. Probably not from the nuclear bombs. In 1979, a set of twins was reunited at the age of 39 when they had been separated at four weeks old and for 37 years they didn't know each other even existed. So when they happened to meet by happenstance, there was a few surprises. Both boys had been named Jim by their adopted parents. Both loved math and carpentry and both pursued careers in security. They even married women named Linda divorced and remarried women named Betty. As for their kids' names, they both named their sons James Allen and James Allen. There was a fascinating reunion to say the least. As a ship's stewardess, you're bound to see some strange sights on the high seas. But to experience two of the most infamous sinkings and one collision, well, that's just bad luck. Fortunately for Violet Jessup, she survived all three. Jessup was aboard the Titanic when it sunk in 1912. She was aboard Lifeboat 16 and handed a baby to look after. Later in 1916, she was aboard the Britannic when it sunk, and she was nearly killed when her lifeboat was sucked under the boat's propellers, but she jumped out and survived. Now, all this bad luck began in 1911 when she was aboard the Olympic, when it had collided with a British warship. While there were no fatalities in this one, at the time it scared her enough that she vowed never to step foot on another ship. I bet the crew and guest of the Titanic and Britannic wish she had kept that promise. Jessup died at the age of 83 of congestive heart failure in 1971. Now this one I find incredibly fascinating and I didn't know this prior to researching it. While you might have learned that World War I was caused by the assassination of Archduke Franz Ferdinand, your history teacher probably left out the fact that the assassination was made possible because the assassin stopped for a sandwich. You see, their original attempt to kill the Archduke failed miserably. Their grenade hit the car behind Ferdinand's, and he escaped the scene unscathed. Obviously, the assassins were angry about this. So angry, they stopped to get a sandwich at a nearby cafe. And I gotta say, I've been pretty angry before, but I've never been aware of this anger level called sandwich. Anyways, the Archduke dashed off in his car, happy to be alive. 
Unfortunately, his driver made a wrong turn and passed right by the cafe where his attackers had stopped for a bite to eat. Maybe his driver was just a little hungry and wanted a pastrami on rye. The failed assassins saw Franz, shot him and his wife. By the way, they later said that they never meant to shoot his wife. They probably had a little mustard on their trigger fingers. The assassination is said to have been the cause of World War I. A side note, in the real world, where I'm not making YouTube videos, I'm an executive chef. And my first thought when researching this was, I wonder what kind of sandwich they were eating. And then this morphed into an in-depth study on the food and dining habits of the Sarajevo people in 1914. Now, unfortunately, the kind of sandwich is never mentioned. I won't bore you with the rest of my culinary findings. Less than a month after sitting at his father's deathbed in April 1865, Robert Todd Lincoln resigned his U.S. Army commission and moved to Chicago with his distraught mother. He later married, had children, and established a successful law practice. He also remained active in politics, accepting the job of Secretary of War in the administration of President James A. Garfield in 1881. That July, Robert Todd Lincoln was at the railroad station in Washington, ready to travel to New Jersey with Garfield, who had been in office less than two months at that time. Before their train left the station, however, a deranged, disgruntled political office seeker shot Garfield in the back. The president died of complications from his wound two months later. In 1901, President William McKinley invited Lincoln to Buffalo, New York to attend the Pan American Exposition. Lincoln arrived while the event was already in progress and was heading to meet the president when an anarchist fatally shot McKinley in the chest and abdomen in front of the crowd of well-wishers. While Vice President Teddy Roosevelt was being sworn in as president, one of his aides told him Lincoln had arrived to wish him well. Teddy said, Robert Todd Lincoln? Nah, I'm good. Don't let that jinx fool near me. I ain't about to be number four on his list. Now he didn't really say that, but I bet he was thinking it. For some, the real estate market is never on their side. In the summer of 1861, Wilmer McLean and his family were living on his wife's plantation near Manassas Junction, Virginia. As Union forces approached, Confederate General P.G.T. Beauregard took over the farm as his headquarters. On July 21st, 1861, Confederate and Union troops clashed in their first major battle of the Civil War along the small stream known as Bull Run which ran through McLean's property. A second major battle, the Second Battle of Bull Run, took place on the same ground in August 1862. By the end of 1863, McLean and his family had relocated to the small hamlet of Appomattox Courthouse, some 120 miles southwest of Manassas Junction. McLean, who had supplied sugar to the Confederate Army, was in Appomattox on April 9, 1865, when Confederate Colonel Charles Marshall approached him for assistance finding a suitable place to host a meeting between General Robert E. Lee and his Union counterpart, Ulysses S. Grant. McLean agreed to any place but his home. General Lee saw things differently. That afternoon, Lee surrendered his army of Northern Virginia to Grant in McLean's parlor. Before the ink had dried, Union troops stripped the house for mementos of the historic occasion. McLean put the surrender house on the market a year later. He wanted to return to Manassas, which he did in 1867, though he never sold the Appomattox house. I guess gutted, destroyed houses weren't a thing back then. No fixer-upper shows in the mid-1800s. Now, instead, he defaulted on his property, and it was sold at public auction in 1869. Now operated by the National Park Service, the McLean House opened to the public in 1949. The Simpsons have been known to accurately predict all sorts of things, but maybe their most impressive prediction of all was guessing that Donald Trump would become president. We didn't see it coming, you didn't see it coming, but the Simpsons definitely saw it coming way back in the year 2000. It also depicts Lisa Simpson as the first female president cleaning up after Trump's presidency. Does anybody know how Biden's doing? If 
Botco took a look at the specifics and it's staggeringly creepy just how many nation-changing events happened on that day. It all started in 1848 with the execution of Robert Bloom. You might not know the name, but he was a crusader for establishing democracy throughout the German-speaking world. Now, fast forward a bit to November 9th, 1918 and Germany's first democracy, the Weimar Republic, was established. Then on November 9th, 1923, Hitler and his band of murderous followers tried to overthrow the Weimar Republic and while it failed, we all know what happened to Hitler next. Two years later, also on November 9th, he founded the elite SS force. November 9th, 1938 was known as Kristallnacht, night of broken glass, when the Nazis unleashed hell on the Jews across the country. It's one of the most notorious dates in German history, and it's also the day that the Berlin Wall fell in 1989. The fall of the Berlin Wall is the kind of thing you could make a national holiday out of in Germany, but it would be tough with all the horrible things that have also happened on November 9th. When the Continental Congress convened in 1775 in Philadelphia, Thomas Jefferson and John Adams became fast friends. The tall, lanky Virginian and stocky Massachusetts native worked together to draft the Declaration of Independence and spent time together as diplomats for the fledgling new country. Their relationship frayed, however, when Jefferson succeeded Adams as president in 1801. It got so bad that Jefferson posted it in a newspaper that President Adams had a hideous hermaphroditical character which has neither the force nor firmness of a man nor the gentleness and sensibility of a woman. In return, Adams fired back in the same paper that Vice President Jefferson was a mean-spirited, low-lived fellow, the son of a half-breed Indian squaw sired by a Virginia mulatto father. And you thought political mudslinging was a recent invention. The two men remained estranged until 1812 when Adams sent Jefferson a New Year's greeting. Their reconciliation spawned a remarkable correspondence that lasted for nearly 15 years. On July 4th, 1826, as the country celebrated 50 years since declaring its independence from Great Britain, the 83-year-old Jefferson passed away at his Virginia state in Monticello. The 90-year-old Adams, on his own deathbed in Quincy, Massachusetts, and unaware of his friend's death, whispered a few last words, sadly mistaken words, Thomas Jefferson survives. Now here's a remarkable coincidence to that coincidence. In 1831, James Monroe became the third of the first five U.S. presidents to die on Independence Day. And James Madison, Jefferson's close friend and fellow Virginian who succeeded him in the White House, died on June 28, 1836, after refusing stimulants offered by his doctor in order to prolong his life until July 4th. John Wilkes Booth and Abraham Lincoln reportedly had a coincidental family connection long before Booth shot Lincoln on that fatal day in April in 1865. Booth's brother Edwin was a somewhat famous stage actor who ardently supported the Union during the Civil War. While in a train station in New Jersey, Lincoln's son, Robert Todd Lincoln, leaned up against a stopped train, falling onto the tracks as it started up again. Edwin Booth grabbed him by the collar and saved him just in time. The younger Lincoln recognized his hero and wrote about the incident, but it wasn't until years later that Booth found out who he had saved. Now, now here's a hint on how many years later it was. Edwin never got a chance to tell his brother John about it because he was, well, deceased by then. Well, that's 10 of the strangest historical coincidences I could find. If you know of any other coincidence that should have been on the list, let me know about it in the comment section. If you like short history videos with sarcasm and humor, consider subscribing to 10 Minute History. If you liked this video, give it a thumbs up. If you have another 10 minutes, check out one of my other videos that YouTube recommends during the bloopers. Until next time. On August 6th, I, I told you to remember this guy's name. 
Study his name, it's Japanese, it's not American. One take, bro, one take. As a ship's stewardess, you're bound to see some strange things on the high seas. But to experience two sinkings of the most infamous <laughs> what does that even mean? That is as a ship's that thing fell. Assassination. What's an assassination? Hey, that's what Bugs Bunny would have called it. That's not what it says. 